Hi. Okay, it's Monday night. It's 9.30. It's time to talk about love and relationships, couplehood, on Facebook Live. I got little Lulu here. I don't know how long she's going to want to stay for. She doesn't like it when I do my, you know, I, I, I guess you say like authoritarian voice or when I kind of get down to business. So I'm just going to... I'm just watching her right now, just seeing her little reaction. <laughs> oh, Lulu. Okay. There we go. All right. So, uh, tonight we are talking about how to really get that love juice flowing right back in your relationship, about breaking a pattern of negative vibes and turning it around and creating you know, getting that first step started, getting that first step started, for getting your relationship into something that feels much more positive, that feels like a really loving exchange, something that you just want to brag about to the whole world, because <laughs> if any of you know me, you know I brag a lot about my relationship and about how we haven't had a fight in three years. And I mean, this is like, amazing because we've been together since 2006. It is 2018. <laughs> when I say we haven't had a fight in three years, you can count the number of years that we have been fighting for. And it really was fighting for almost that entire time. Like, um, there was a lot of difficulty. There was, there was a, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that we both needed to overcome. And so, you know, a lot of us go through this, a lot of us bring baggage into a relationship, uh, and, and in addition to that, life gets really stressful, you have babies, you're aging, which means your parents are aging, which means your parents are getting sick. Ladies, you bear the burden. I mean, you really do. Men are like, the, the, the story, put the head down, go to work every day, pay the bills, um, that's, that's, that's so cute. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay, honey bunny. I always post these videos back up. I post them back up on Facebook. I post them on YouTube. So if you, if, if, cause you know, I'm doing this live. If you come in live and you start late, you can always just go back and start at the beginning. And by the way, uh, on this one, you're going to see Lulu. So go back and go catch that beginning part. Cause you're going to, you're going to see my little baby. Um, so this video is, is just all about turning it around from this place where you feel unsupported, where you feel frustrated, where you're hitting a brick wall, where you're trying to break through emotionally and get that love going. And it's really, really, really hard. I get that. I get that. Now, I didn't have kids, so I don't know that aspect of it. My parents are fine. I don't know that aspect of it, but we had our own difficulties. Um, you know, it's hard, hard when you're dating somebody who were on her second marriage, you know, they've got children with another woman and, and it's, it's somebody who works really hard to keep her happy because he understands that her emotional state trickles down to her children and you're coming in fourth after the work he needs to go to every day so he can make the money to support her to support them and then there you are at the end of it and you know when you when you're trying to break through the man barriers <laughs> which is the communication barriers which is the opening up barriers which is the understanding how to love me barriers it can get really tricky and unless you get really strategic, you're not going to get there. You're just going to keep hitting that wall over and over again. And I'm telling you, my husband and I were, oh, like how, how, how close can I have my fingers and yet still not have them touching? We were that close to divorce. It, it, it I mean, we broke up and we broke up and we broke up. And when we got married, it was, it was a leap of faith. Like it really literally was a leap of faith. Like my, you know, my husband's like, what kind of wedding do you want? And I'm like, let's do city hall, <laughs> you know, because as, as you know, the, the wedding was, uh, it was an anchor 
our marriage was an anchor. Hi, Valerie. Whoa, good, good to see you. Our, our wedding was an anchor, but for the two years after that, we were still trying to overcome. And I finally figured it out. And when I started to figure it out, it was dominoes. It was dominoes and it was good dominoes. And, and I get it. I get how to break through that man code. I get how to get him to understand you. And that's the hard part, isn't it, ladies? Is getting him to understand you. It's, it's, it's kind of easier in a way to, to understand men. There is some little trickiness that you got to work through, but you know, we kind of, we sit on our islands, both, both of you, you and your partner, you are on your island right now. And each of you are going, listen to me, but at the same time, which means nobody's hearing each other. And that is, um, that is what I'm going to help you overcome and work through is, is the fact that you're both yelling at the same time. And so you're not hearing each other. So today I, I just want to kind of get you started on that process. I, I want you to start breaking through because you have to understand when it comes to men, you got to play the long game. Uh, think football. Okay. Think football. It is not one game that they're focused on. It is a series of games one after another to get to that Super Bowl and to win the Super Bowl. And that is how you have to play this. You have to see this as a long game and it's a lot of mini battles and you will lose some and you have to surrender that loss. And just, just tell yourself that is okay because this is a small failure on the way to a large success. And if anybody here has started a business, has struggled through something and broken through, they understand that you have to be okay with those failures. Um, and you got to have the long game in mind and you have to be strategic. If you don't have a plan, you're planning to fail, right? So this is your plan. This is the first step in that plan. And you want to be able to come to a place where you can say, that's not fair. That's not fair. And when you say that to a man and it really isn't fair, that's when they really start understanding you. When you can get them to understand that they own their shit, that they can't blame you for your stuff because you're owning yours and you've separated yours from theirs. They really start to get it, but it is a long process and I'm, I'm gonna teach you those little steps to get you through. So, um, sorry, I'm just, I'm reading my cheat sheet right now, <laughs> making sure I'm staying on track with you guys. Um, this advice that I'm gonna give you does not work with guys. Guys are selfish short-term thinkers. It works with men who are generous long-term thinkers. Now, a guy can become a man if he loves you enough and you set a standard, and that standard is, unless you're going to be a man, this isn't the relationship for me. Um, and you really hold fast to that, and, and you, you stand on it, and you're firm with it. So. You, you got to have standards and, and, and if that's something you need help with, then message me and we'll talk about it. Um, but let's assume for the sake of this conversation that you were with a good man and you, you can tell a good man by his behaviors. Um, he works hard for the family. He is dedicated to ensuring the security of those that he loves, whether it is his spouse, it is his children, it is his parents, it is the mother of his children from a previous relationship. Um, as much as it hurts sometimes to, to not be that forefront person, uh, when you can look at those behaviors and admire him for it, this is your first step to understanding that you have a good man in front of you. So look at how hard he works because good men have good work ethics. Look at what he does with the outcome of his work. Is he supporting the people that he loves instead of spending it frivolously on himself? And if it's yes and yes, you've got a good man and half the battle is achieved and now you just want to make sure that you can make it work so that you don't end up signing divorce papers down the road because both of you were yelling with your megaphones and not understanding each other. I want you to break through that barrier 
and get into the love that you're looking for, which is a relationship where there's no fighting, where there can be a sharp word, and it's okay because the apology has been happening so consistently that you're now just even just doing it in your heads. Like you just forgive each other so quickly that you're moving through crap into goodness. And so it's more goodness than it is crap. I'm not promising that it'll never be crap. This is life, it's gonna happen. But you are gonna have a relationship that's much more enjoyable. You're gonna feel supported. You're gonna feel loved. You're gonna feel uplifted. And you're gonna feel like this person is on your side. Um, so here is what I want you to do. This, I, I want you to commit to this for three months and see what comes back. Because when it comes to this kind of relationship, ladies, you need to be the emotional leader, which means you're the one that has to lead the way. You, you gotta lead the horse to water. When it comes to making a relationship work, men are a little bit clueless. Bill, I know you might be on here, I'm sorry. But, you know, and, and you're probably less clueless than most because you do, you do the kind of research that I do, so I know that you get it. Um, but, you know, most men, they're just, they're kind of winging it and there's, there's a subconscious thing going on at the back of his head going, she needs to show me the way. So he's really waiting for you to show him the way. And once you start doing that, it really gets the ball rolling. Now the first thing you have to do is you have to eliminate unnecessary fights. Meditation. You know if you've read any of my books, this is the first step in my seven step process. The seven steps being grounding, which is meditation, clarity, overcoming fear, um, connecting, discovery, intimacy, love. So you really kind of, you have to do things in order. You're not gonna get to love until you can settle your brain. And this is a huge, super important step. You must calm your brain. Because I guarantee you, uh, if your household is stressed, which means you are stressed, then you are having unnecessary fights. Because there's a part of your brain that is overactive. And it is the part of your brain that's called your amygdala and it's your fight or flight center and it is shooting off stress, anxiety, fear responses because it's on autopilot. Because so many times a day, every day, you've been having that response to genuine things, to the guy cutting you off in traffic, to your boss being in a bad mood that day and he's been on a firing spree and you're wondering if you're the next on the chopping block. Um, to wondering when is that next phone call gonna come from the hospital, from the nursing home, because somebody that I love is sick. Um, you know, when is the school gonna call again, because my kid's having trouble. Like, there's so many things that are triggering your brain that your brain starts going, yep, yeah, I'm just gonna do this on my own now. And so your partner comes home, and, it, and, and your brain just goes blip, and you say to yourself, I feel stress, fear, and anxiety. Somebody must be causing this because all these other things today caused it. So what is making me feel this way right now? You're gonna look, you're gonna see the closest person to you. It's gonna be your partner. You're gonna roll back through your memory to find what pissed you off. I guarantee you're gonna find something and you're gonna lay into him. You need to change this so I feel better. That right there was an unnecessary fight. These are the ones we need to eliminate because when these fights are happening, he can't separate his crap emotions from your crap emotions and then it gets all mixed up and then he says, you make me feel this way so you're the bad guy in this relationship. And I need you to make that stop happening so that when he feels bad, he can't blame it on you. And that's when he starts to realize that he owns his emotions, but this is a process and you have to get there. And you get there by eliminating those unnecessary fights. So here's your first step. You're gonna go to YouTube, you're gonna type in my name, Chantal Hyde, or go to my website, canadasdatingcoach.com or lovemaker.com. You're gonna see my little YouTube icon up at the top and you are going to click it and you're gonna find my YouTube channel, you're gonna find my Let's Meditate playlist, 
you're going to see there's a little two minute tutorial at the very top of that playlist and the next one is a 10 minute love signal so watch the tutorial if you don't know how to meditate it's super easy you can you close your eyes sit in a chair wear headphones yes you can meditate so then you're going to listen to the 10 minute love signal it is a binaural beat it is a frequency that matches a meditative frequency and really makes the most of those 10 minutes. It, it makes the time that you spend meditating more efficient. And you're a busy mama and you need that. So you need to relax your brain, but you need to do it in little time. And so that's why I had my friend Rich Pumlebury make that 10 minute love signal for you. And he is a genius at creating meditative tracks. I've got a bunch of his tracks on there. He literally made these for you. Ladies, I am working so hard for you guys and I'm recruiting people to work for you. So listen to that with headphones, relax. If you want to listen to it again, do it again. If you want to listen to it in the morning, in the afternoon, on your lunch break, after supper, whenever, it doesn't matter. Find your groove. It is up to you when this is gonna work for you. Um, if, if you feel like trying something else, um, I know, Tabitha. Tabitha listens to my Rich Pendlebury tracks and she just wrote, he's amazing in caps and he is, I love that you love him. Um, <laughs> sorry, you're awesome. Thank you. Um, Tabitha, so are you. Uh, so whatever you want to find on that playlist, whatever you want to find outside of that playlist, just, just Give yourself the time to shrink the part of your brain that is causing those unnecessary fights so that you don't have those ones anymore. Because you know on the way to love, the less you fight, the closer you're getting. So give yourself that time. You deserve it. This is something that's going to leach into every part of your life. You're doing this for your relationship, but you're going to find that you feel less stressed at work, you feel less stressed over your kids, you feel less stressed over that sick person that you love. It will soothe your raw nerves. Do this for yourself. Now, the second step, super important, is knowing each other's love language because if you are expending effort that is going nowhere, guess how you're gonna feel? Frustrated. Like, I literally said to my husband, I'm not going to do anything for you anymore unless you ask me to, unless I know you want me to do it because I got tired of doing things that I thought he would appreciate only to find out that it wasn't registering for him. Um, so you want to fill each other's love bank, but you need to be effective, right? And you need to be efficient. Again, not everybody has a ton of time. So you have to do that love language quiz. So go to Google and type in five love language quiz, print it out, print out two copies, sit down with your partner, fine. It's gonna take you eight minutes. So say to your partner, I wanna do something with you. Can you let me know when you have time? There's a certain way of communicating with men that really kind of helps them open up. And the one thing you cannot do with a male is tell them what to do. Like honestly, when I, when I want my husband to understand that I need something from him, I open with, I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. This is so important. I, if, if I started any other way, he would not hear a word I said. Um, so letting him understand that I understand that he is an autonomous being and he is not a child and I am not to tell him what to do, you know, you weave it in. And so you have this project that you want to do with him that's going to take eight minutes. Um, so you come to him and you say, I want to do something with you. When is a good time? And what this does is it opens the door for him to be part of that decision-making process. Uh, Valerie says meditation makes a huge difference and yes, you do deserve it. Mm -hmm. You know, sister. Uh, so ask him, when would be a good time? If he says, I don't know, respect that. And say, you know, set a deadline. So say you, you have this, you bring this up on Monday. Um, 
say, okay, can you let me know by Thursday when would be a good time? Men are very quantitative beings. When you make things physical in, instead of just like a feeling, they, they can lean into this because this is something that they really understand, this physical world, this here and now, you know, tangibility. So you're asking him on Monday, I want to do this with you. When would be a good time? He says, I don't know. You say, can you let me know on Thursday you know, or by Thursday? And he'll say, okay, because really that's reasonable. You're giving him four days to think about it. And then you come to him on Thursday because he might not have said anything between then, which is fine. It is his right. Do not get steamy. On Thursday, you come back to him and you go, hey, that project that I mentioned on Monday, do you know when would be a good time for us to do that? And these, these little things, these little shows of respect for his, his individuality are things that are gonna trigger some positivity and some gratitude in his brain because he's not feeling like you're cornering him. He's feeling like you're being, you know, reasonable, reasonable, you know? <laughs> so he, 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 he's, he's gonna start to open up because he's feeling like you're, um, you're giving him a certain level of autonomy in this process and this is good for him. This, it's, it's you kind of stepping back and allowing him to step forward, right? Because if you keep stepping up into him, he's just gonna keep backing up. So know each other's love language so that you understand how to, how to expend your efforts. This is super important. And it's so important for you to do yours as well because when I have people do this, about 50% of people end up being surprised by the results. Half the people who do this test with me, I say them, I ask them at the beginning, what do you think your love language is? And they tell me and then they do the test and it's something completely different and they're surprised. So do it yourself because this helps you understand what to fight for and that is important. You want to ask your partner to give you your primary love language, but you don't wanna ask him to give you the world. It's not fair to ask one person to be everything for you. So the rest of the stuff that's important to you, go dispense that with your other folk, with your family, with your friends. Uh, you know, get if, if it's physical affection and, and his isn't, then get a lot more cuddles from your kids, you know? Have your kids do it too, by the way. Everybody that's around you that you love, understand how to love them. It's really going to bring you so much closer. This, this in-depth understanding of each other is really how we can learn how to exchange love in a super functional manner. So don't miss out on this opportunity to get each other. Now, your third step is going to be practice consistency. You, you want to, you know, it's, 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 I don't know, I, I, I mean, I, I have an idea of why it's easier for me to get women to meditate than it is to get men. And I think it's because our brains function a lot more. We do a lot more um, multitasking in our heads versus men. There's a, an image that I show when I do public talks and it's, it's kind of two brains side by side and orange lines show thoughts that are crisscrossing between hemispheres and blue lines show thoughts that are happening within the same hemisphere. And one of the brains has a bunch of crisscrossing orange and the other one has a lot less blue lines. And I'm like, which one do you think is the female brain? Which one do you think is the male brain? So I really think meditation, it, it kind of, it settles our brain and it sort of vibes us down a little bit and men in a way are already there. So, but the thing is, he's getting stressed out by life. He's getting stressed out by coming home and not knowing what he's coming home to because you're angry, because all these things have been happening and you're not feeling supported and loved on top of that. And he comes in through the door and your amygdala is blitzing and you find something to get angry at him about and you unleash when he gets home. And you've been waiting to unleash, haven't you? Admit it. It happens sometimes, listen. I was there, I was there. I know full well what that unleashing is. So let's pull that back. Let's create some consistency when, he, when you re-see him so that he starts relaxing on his way to you before he's even 
come to you before he's even in your presence. Let's relax his brain a little bit so that while you are meditating and shrinking your amygdala, you're also helping him shrink his. So whatever has happened in your day, whatever has stressed you out, when he comes home, give him that greeting. Give him a kiss. Fall into his arms. Let him know he is your safe place. Let him know you are his safe place. And just have that first moment, those, that, those first five seconds. If you can't do 10, do five seconds of just like, hey, I'm glad you're here. A hug, a kiss, and then go back to what's stressing you out. But create consistently a moment of niceness when he comes home so that when he's in the car on his way home he's anticipating you in a positive way and not a negative way this brings him one step further too and now you two are starting to come in towards each other in a great positive loving way um, now another part of this practice consistency thing I'm gonna give you three steps to that so the first one is what is that interaction when you guys re-see each other? Another one is add a little bit of sweetness. So understanding each other's love language gives you a clue on how to add some sweetness that's gonna count. So if it's physical affection, it's, uh, it's, it's a hug that he's not expecting. If it's quality time, it's lingering with him a little bit longer. Uh, if it's words of affirmation, uh, Tabitha, I love that my boyfriend always looks forward to that first hug and releasing stress when he gets home from work. Um, God, I love you, Tabitha. You're freaking awesome. Uh, so if it's words of affirmation, you know, I mean, my love language is words of affirmation. My husband isn't, but I tell him, you know, almost every day, you're, you're, you're such a good man. You're a good husband. You're the best husband in the world. Like, you know, like just, just a little something that just kind of builds him up and, and strokes his, his, you know, his inner manliness a little bit. Uh, you know, so you get the point. Know his love language and then just interject a little bit of that every day into his life. Um, and then learn the art of apology because these moments where we vomit on each other, where we take that stress that we picked up during the day and then we just bet. You need to not let it hang in the air like a stink. So you have to learn the art of getting through it so you can get to the other side and back into a good feeling again. And, and the more you do that, the faster it happens. So here is how you say, I'm sorry. First of all, think about it. Don't just blurt the words out. This is, this is really a process and you want him to understand that you are sorry so that those good vibes start happening again and you might think it's hard to say you're sorry but the fact is it's so liberating like i went from being that person who was this this is not my fault i know how it's not my fault it's all your fault and you need to make up for this and until you realize how this is your fault i'm just so angry that we're not gonna get through this until whatever this is is so far behind me that I just you know almost forget about it. You, you can't have this hanging in the air and then having another one pile up on top of that and then on top of that. So the art of I'm sorry happens as you're thinking. And here's how it's gonna happen. So your amygdala went on, or your, your amygdala was blitzing, you had a verbal vomit, and you know you you kind of go oh where did that come from like you realize because you know like oh my god this is tense this is uncomfortable i'm not happy um we had a fight how did i contribute to this this is an important step because when you start taking responsibility for what's what your reactions are in your relationship and this is how you really start switching things around so how am i responsible for this so in this case, it's I haven't meditated and shrunk my amygdala and I had 
a stress reaction when you came home. So then the next step is what am I going to do about it? So the answer to that would be I'm going to make sure that I'm staying on top of my meditation and getting in at least 10 minutes a day. Boom, you have your full apology, which is, I'm sorry, I realize what I did wrong and I know how I'm gonna change this going forward. So now you go to your partner and that is exactly what you present. Baby, I'm sorry I started that fight. My amygdala is crazy and I'm super stressed out about stuff and I had a verbal vomit on you and I'm really sorry about that and I'm gonna make sure that I keep meditating because it's gonna shrink the part of my brain that has me being so on edge. And then you leave it at that. Now the key to all of this, all of these steps that I'm giving you tonight is to do it and then release. Do it and then release. Because if you're expecting a, a kickback right away, you will be disappointed, which means, you know, what's, what's the next emotion after disappointment? Anger, frustration. So you're just escalating your own emotions. You want to know that you're doing the right thing. You want to take comfort in the fact that you're doing the right thing. You, you want to have faith that you doing the right thing will ultimately give you exactly what it is that you're looking for. So don't be short term about this. Again, this is about the long game. So you do these steps and then you release and you will likely feel so much better just doing that. So follow this advice. Try this for three months. Check your calendar today and then flip over three months. Check the date on that date and, and, and just do this for three months and observe what's going on. Be that social scientist, you know, just have a change of behavior and then observe the changes in his behavior. This is going to be the most incredible experiment you have ever conducted in your entire life. And I'm excited for you. Um, so here's some call to actions. Uh, you know you're going to get a free book if you go to my website, canadasdatingcoach.com or lovemaker.love. Uh, by the way, there's a book associated to everything that I'm talking about tonight, which is Fix That Shit, A Couple's Guide to Getting Past the Sticky Stuff. This is every step that I did that pulled my husband and I from fighting all the time to no more fights for three years. How do I sustain this? What are you know, because the relationships are ongoing, right? So you need to sustain and you need to have this habit of doing these steps. Um, so this book lays out all the steps that are going to get you into this relationship where you feel like you are Cinderella married to your prince. It is magical. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, look, 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 see this face right here. Come over here. It's really awesome. Come join me. Um, so, Go find me on YouTube, Instagram, obviously Facebook, here we are right now, but you're going to see this on YouTube maybe. So uh, go find me, CanadasDatingCoach.com on Facebook. Um, let me see, where else am I? Did I say iTunes? Um, yeah, I think I got it covered. Uh, I have seven books right now. And uh, if you're listening or watching this in three months from now, I'm gonna have eight. Thank you very much. Um, honestly, people, I am, I am on a roll. I've got so much stuff to teach you. I have, I have 20 years worth of stuff that I learned and I have everything that I'm learning today. Um, and it is, it is all coming. You know, one thing that I say is I do it all for you. So, Join me on this voyage and let's have the most amazing life ever. I'll see you soon.